people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Certified Christian Counselor and Director of Ottawa's Elam Counseling Services. Hi, I'm Michael Hart, President of Elam Counseling Service, and I want to thank you for listening to this edition of Life Transformation, a Christian counseling radio show where chains are broken and lives are transformed. Today we have a very interesting topic for you. We'll be discussing this uh, issue of eating disorder. And with me in studio today uh, is Judy Gatehouse, and and she'll be sharing her experience with eating disorder and how how God has taken her through this difficulty. Uh, Welcome, Judy. It's good having you here with me today. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm really grateful to join you and your listeners today to talk about my struggles with it, with eating disorders because ultimately it's a story of God's saving mercy in my life. Uh, eating disorder, I, I find uh, from the research that I has done, is that it's mostly common in adolescents and young adults, and that it affects women ten times more than than men. And uh, I want you to, to, to talk a bit, uh, maybe tell our listeners a bit before we go into this whole discussion as eating disorder, a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, and so forth. Okay, well, I'm a believer in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the past 10 years. I, uh, I'm retired. I uh, worked for a wonderful company for about 15 years. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a, I'm a grandmother, which is a, a dandy job to have. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just felt the Lord taking me out of the corporate world to, uh, to have time to work with Him and, and ultimately, I, as I've discovered now, to, time to be transformed. Praise God. Uh, the joys of being a grandmother, right? The, the, the good thing about being a grandparent is that you get to spend quality time with the kids, but then you can send them home <laughs> yeah. yes, at and the end of the day. That's it. And see the world from the eyes of a child again, you know, yes, instead of a yes. serious adult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so despite your, your faith in God, Judy, and the fact that, that you're, you're a believer, there was a time when you struggled uh, with eating eating disorder. Can, can you talk a little bit about what your situation was like? Yes. Well, for five decades, if you can imagine, that's half a century, starting from about age five into my teens and into adulthood, mm-hmm. I was trapped in a relentless eating disorder I didn't even know I had, mm-hmm. if you can believe that. I found out later that it was bulimia. And my bulimia had two very contrasting behaviors, mm-hmm. excessive eating and then restrictive eating combined with frequent, precise exercise. So the excessive eating was really my way to cope with stress and deal with strong emotion. Uh, Without being too graphic, it was large quantities of food eaten very quickly Mm -hmm. in a very short period of time. Very much mindless eating. I I hardly even knew that, that I was doing it. There were no inhibitions with food in that phase of it, the excessive mm-hmm, part. Mm-hmm. Then the flip side, the exact contrast, was restrictive eating and exercise. So I was trying to regain control of this, this chaos and really to almost punish myself for the excessive eating. And control was also a way to cope with stress and emotion. So very rigid dieting small portions, eating only food that I thought were good foods. I had a list of bad foods that Mm -hmm. I didn't eat. You you talk about the control was a way of of coping. Can Mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, it was comforting in a way to Mm -hmm. have control over everything when I felt my life was out of control. Mm -hmm. My -hmm. needs weren't being met. Mm -hmm. So what I could control was my my food intake and also Mm. my exercise. Right. So those things I could control. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the fact that you felt your life was out of control, knowing that you had this ability to, to control your intake of food yes. uh, was, was a, a very comforting comforting. It, it was uh, comforting, yes. Habit for you. It was very it, unhealthy, but unhealthy, very comforting. But comforting. <laughs> but comforting, that's for sure. Okay. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my, my exercise, for example, had to be exactly precisely timed. It had to be certain routines. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really my form of purging. I didn't purge with bulimia, right. but exercise my, was my way of 
getting rid of the calories. And, you know, I, I like to say that I, uh, I think I've been to the moon and back on my treadmill, you know, in all those times the, mm-hmm. of exercise. Mm-hmm. It was constant and, and very, very punishing. In so that way. very rigorous exercise mm-hmm. as a way of, of, of controlling, controlling your weight. Controlling my weight. Okay. Right. So I, I, I hear you talk about uh, trying to have control. I hear you mm-hmm. talk about exercising. I hear you talk about eating food and then trying to not gain weight. Mm-hmm. But what was it that brought you to a place where you decided that uh, you needed to seek help? Well, again, after almost five decades of this behavior, which I thought was normal, mm-hmm. I, I had co-workers, for example, being concerned about my weight. At one point, they thought I might even have a terminal illness. My, my appearance was so unhealthy from, from rapid, severe weight mm-hmm. loss. Mm-hmm. And emotionally, to the people that, that knew me, I was energetic, friendly, positive, and stable, but really deep inside was was a 180, was a, a person who was depressed, angry, fearful, and confused. Mm-hmm. And then in acting out these emotions, it was damaging my relationships, and ultimately I started to feel the physical effects of, of my eating disorder as well. Mm-hmm. And I just, I couldn't handle it anymore. I really was crushed under the weight of this burden. It was too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I sought help. So it, it seemed to me like when you talk about uh, friends looking on mm-hmm. and thinking that there was a some kind of terminal illness mm-hmm. that you had, it, it seemed to me that you it must have affected your your appearance in in a very stark and noticeable noticeable way. Yes, at, at one point it did. Mostly though, I was stable because if you can imagine the excessive eating mm-hmm. being offset by the restrictive. So th- there wasn't usually a great, um, you know, change. Mm-hmm. But on this, this one occasion for a number of months, my weight really reduced drastically. Mm. And I, yeah. So you talked about being confused and being crushed. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it that led you to a place where you entered into a relationship with God. How did you find God through all, through all of that? Well, you know, this is a moment that I'll never forget. I, I was in my 40s by this time, and I was sitting at my dining room table. I was weeping over what my life had become. It was chaos of, of emotions and, e- and, and eating behaviors. And I cried out, looking up to the ceiling, I said, help me. And I didn't even know who I was crying out to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But instantly, this peace came over me. And I had a very strong urge to go and get a book about God, which I thought was was unusual. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. I went and got the book right away. I read it in record time. And as I was turning the the last page of the book, I just knew that it was God who had reached out Mm -hmm. and answered my cry for help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think of Psalm 116.1. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Right. And that's really very much how it felt. Someone listening out there might be thinking that uh, this you have had this, based on what you have said so far, you have been walking and journeying through this this uh, eating disorder, bulimia, for, for a while. Mm-hmm. And then you mentioned in your conversion experience that you you came to a point that made you cry out, for help. What mm-hmm. was different uh, it, about that period that made you cry out to God for help? Well, I, I think part of it was the severity of what was happening in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It started to feel as if, no, this is not normal. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't even feed myself normally. I don't know what hunger is. I don't know what, what feeling full is. And also, I also had a sense that God had been trying to contact me before. Mm -hmm. I'd had these sort of urges to maybe go to church or connect with people who who were Christians, and I really ignored them. I pushed them away. So I think it was God kind of upping upping the game, if you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. trying to get Mm -hmm. my attention, and and he did. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. If you have just joined us, you're listening to Life Transformations with your host, Michael Hart. And with me in studio today is Judy Gatehouse. And Judy and I are talking about this uh, issue of eating disorder. In particular, she's sharing about her experience uh, with eating disorder. So, so Judy, I wanted to, to continue a discussion and to, uh, for you to tell me a little bit about uh, having c- come to faith, what transpired after that, because oftentimes we 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 get the picture from a lot of testimonies that we hear that people get saved and then all their problems and issues, yeah. everything disappears, <laughs> right? It's now, we, we now live happily ever after, yeah. no more problems, yes, right? Yes. Uh, what th- that wasn't the the, the 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 case in your situation. So after conversion, what mm-hmm. what uh, led to you seeking? Uh, professional help? Mm. Well, I I knew from reading the Bible that Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit was now dwelling in me, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure what what was going to happen after that. So um, God very much was the instigator of all of these things that I sought for help. I, uh, he, he sent me to another book. He seems to use books to reach me, (laughs) not just the Bible. Um, So I, I, uh, got read a book on eating disorders, and as I was reading the book, I said, "Oh, gee, I have a lot of these symptoms." Mm-hmm. So I, then I sought um, an eating disorders counselor, a specialist, mm-hmm. and she helped. She diagnosed my disorder as bulimia, non-purging, but again, purging with the exercise. I sought some Christian counseling, which which is very different. I mean, it's God-centered help. Uh, we have a, an added spiritual dimension where, um, you know, with with you, for example, Michael, mm-hmm, as my mm-hmm, counselor, mm-hmm. you know, we're praying, the Holy Spirit is with us, and the Holy Spirit is working between both of us right. to, to help solve mm-hmm, this problem. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, you know, I spent more time with God. I was praying more. Uh, I was learning from spiritually mature Christians. I was learning more about the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I also got in touch with a... Um, a Christian faith and health ministry that I, I really understood from them what the link is between our relationship with God and our lifestyle health issues like eating disorder behaviors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when you put all this together, I, I really feel that that was, that was how the transformation was taking place. Right, right. And I think it, it what you have just said about uh, counseling and about Christian counseling uh, is very, very important because there are people out there who might be listening to this broadcast today who might be suffering from eating disorder and they're reluctant to seek counseling and to get help because in their minds they see professional help as being in opposition to the movement of God's Spirit or somehow yes. as a lack of faith. You know, you're seeking help from mm-hmm. a counselor, you're not trusting in God, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. that kind yes. of thing. But you're saying that in your situation, uh, your experience of Christian counseling was that it actually embraced your faith and helped mm-hmm. and, and uh, put God as the center. Can you talk a little bit more yes. about that? Well, I, I realize that, that God was using you, for example, to speak to me. And then often you would find, a, you know, based on what we talked about, you would find a scripture passage that would be comforting to me, that would, that would be a teachable mm-hmm. uh, time for me. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't see the two as in opposition at all now that I've experienced, you know, longer-term Christian counseling. I think it's it's good for people out there to to hear that. And if you have just joined us, this is Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services, and you're listening to the Life Transformations radio broadcast. And with me in studio today is Judy Gatehouse, and we are talking about Judy's experience with eating disorder, in particular bulimia. Uh, if you're not familiar with Elim Counseling Services, you we can be reached at 613-699-1677. Our website is www.elimcounseling.com. Elim Counseling Ministry dot com and counseling with two L's. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the kind of help that that you got, because uh, it wants it's one thing to say that you you got Christian counseling, but how was the help effective for you? Well, I think that the most important thing that I learned from my counseling and and encounters with God 
was recognizing that my eating disorder behaviors were my useless attempt to feel worthy of love. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, discovered mm -hmm. that all my life I felt worthless and, and was unsure of the value of my life. And then, you know, God in counseling showed me his constant, incomparable love through mm -hmm, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he also made it clear to me that I had to release control of my life to him. So no longer controlling food, it's now I release control of my life to God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and he used others such as you to, to help me with this. Was there like a, a aha moment in, in the counseling process for you, Judy? Well, I think the uh, aha moment would be that God is sovereign. Mm -hmm, <laughs> God, mm -hmm, God, mm -hmm. God is sovereign, and, and that my eating disorder behaviors were actually sinful. Mm -hmm. You know, I, first of all, I didn't know I had an eating disorder. Then I thought it was normal behavior. But really, I wasn't honoring his design for our bodies mm -hmm, and his mm -hmm. design for our relationship. Right. So I think that's the that was the, the key. Right. Uh, some of the the books that I've read on eating disorder from a Christian perspective talks about uh, knowing the truth and mm -hmm. being set free yes. by the truth. And yes. oftentimes behind eating disorder are lies that we have learned about ourselves from mm -hmm. our childhood yeah. that make us uh, get trapped in this in this cycle. Are you able to, to think of uh, maybe analyze about yourself that you were believing before coming into faith and, and, and before getting help uh, for your eating disorder? Yes. Surely the first one was, the, the first lie was, I'm not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. I'm not loved and I'm not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't talk about other people. This is strictly, you know, what I felt and my responses to what I felt. Because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's the important thing. Uh, and the other piece is I can do something to feel worthy of love. Mm -hmm. So I was trying all of these things, not just eating disorders, but um, my eating disorder, but workaholism and, and other things to try mm -hmm. to feel worthy of love. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. clearly, and those lies have been replaced with the truth of, you know, knowing how much God loves me through Jesus mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that it's, it's what he does that sets me free rather than all the, you know, Herculean efforts I was going through to try to feel that love and right, try to feel right. worth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I think that is such an important and crucial step that uh, that we try to work through in counseling because oftentimes these lies they're 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 so deeply embedded in our psyche mm -hmm. that we're not sometimes even totally conscious that they are there. However, we govern our lives and we enter into adult relationships and into, in, in, into everything that we do with these core values that mm -hmm. say, I am not lovable, I am not worthy. Yes. And as a result of that, we, we end up getting into dysfunctional cycle after cycle in, in the different areas of our lives. When the Bible says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free, oftentimes it's a process that has to yes. be worked through in counseling to, to get to that point where you're able to say that I now understand what's going on. Okay, so what is your situation today, Judy? Like, I, I know you have, you have talked about uh, your initial struggles with bulimia. You talk about your your faith in, in coming to God. You talk about uh, getting Christian counseling and uh, you know having uh, certain ha ha moments uh, mm -hmm. during that that help you to realize that you are lovable and help you to realize who you are in Christ. Tell tell us a li little bit more about what your true situation is today. Mm -hmm. Well, as you said before, Michael, it's not you flip the switch and everything is is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still a work in progress. I you know, as a as a believer, I still have a tendency for sin, of course, mm -hmm. but I know that my life transformation is ongoing. Um you know, what's really different in me that I never could have foreseen before is that I you know, I'm still seeking God and to deepen my relationship with him. So daily, I consciously surrender my spirit, my soul, and my body to him, especially my will. You know, I say, Lord, what do you want me to do 
not not my will but yours mm -hmm. so that's something i do every day every, every day so it, every it's, day. It's, it's a daily step of faith yes. a daily walk every day w walk with god but are there temptations along the way to revert to to your old patterns of, of eating disorder oh absolutely absolutely i i do feel temptations in my thoughts and and what i do then is i you know, I call on what I call God's powerhouse, the Holy Spirit, who lives in me to help me. Mm -hmm. For example, today I, I needed to call on him to take away an exercise-related lie that I was thinking. You know, it was old, rigid thinking. And uh, I called on him, and he was faithful again. He, he overcame that lie and, and, and told me the truth. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I do slip, it's because I, I choose. I choose to meet my needs outside of God. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, it's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a willful thing. And, you know, my favorite scripture are the words of Jesus in John fifteen five: I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so the vine, Jesus, he'll nourish us Right. with his power when we stay close to him. Right, right. So that's part of your secret and your strength going forward is staying close to Jesus and Amen. drawing strength Absolutely. from him. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting because I hear you saying that there, there are still temptations, there mm -hmm. are still thoughts that mm -hmm. come in, mm -hmm. but you're able to overcome those thoughts yes. through the, the, the powerhouse, the Holy Spirit of, of, of God that, that resides in you. Yes, Absolutely. Okay. Can you tell me a, a little more, Judy, about uh, how God is turning around your years of struggle uh, with an eating disorder as, as a way of helping others today? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Well, I have a deep compassion for women who are burdened by such extreme thoughts and actions around food. And I find Christian women in particular, you know, find it very difficult to admit mm -hmm. this struggle. There's that, oh, I, I should be perfect, I'm a believer, I'm, I should be following Jesus, so I can't, I can't acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And one of the points of denial is, you know, if somebody doesn't have a diagnosed eating disorder like I did, they think, well, I, I don't have a problem with mm -hmm. eating, because mm -hmm. nobody's ever said I have anorexia, bulimia, or whatever. Right. But, you know, if, if somebody's eating behaviors are having a negative effect on them or others, you know, I would really urge them to please seek professional help. Because mm -hmm, if, you, if mm -hmm. you sense that there's something abnormal in your behaviors or someone is telling you there is, then please, uh, please get help. Mm -hmm. And I also understand that there is a, a ministry that you're involved in, in helping women who are, who are struggling from eating disorder. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit to that? So from this compassion, uh, God has given me a ministry to launch called Hungry for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And really what it is, it's, it's God-centered hope and help to conquer disordered eating. Mm -hmm. We're focused keenly on our spiritual relationship with God in the ministry. We don't offer medical advice. We don't give dietary information. We don't do counseling therapy. Michael, I'd leave that to professionals <laughs> <Okay>. like you. <laughs> it's really focused on, you know, how is our relationship with God lacking, absent? How does it need to be, how does it need to be strengthened? So that's the focus. And, and we, so we have a Bible study, a Christian book study, a blog. There's a website coming which should launch on, on the 31st of March. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I really... I just feel that we have to bring this very common problem into God's light mm -hmm. because so often it stays in the shadows of shame and isolation like we can't talk about it. Right, and especially in Christian circles, yes. there is this uh, fallacy, this, this, this kind of a denial where we all pretend to be strong and to yes. have it all together when, mm -hmm. in, when in truth and in fact we are sinners saved by grace and we all struggle with with different forms of temptation yes. and different different uh, mental health issues. So your group is a way of, uh, number one, uh, making it okay for women to say, I have this issue with, without feeling that they are, they are judged in, in any way. And I, I, I think I, I see it's a kind of a support group where that, that offers spirituality as a strength, as a source of strength yes. for helping women get over 
over that habit. I think that's such a wonderful thing for you to be doing, Judy, because I think it is very needed, especially in Ottawa, to have to have a group like that. Uh, unfortunately, we are coming to the end of today's mm-hmm. broadcast. It was such a pleasure having you here today. Time time has gone by so quickly, and we're almost at the end of today's broadcast. So thank you very much for, for joining us today, and I, I, I do pray that God would continue to uh, use you and, and use the, the struggles that you have had and turn it around and bring in blessing for others. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation, Michael. It was my pleasure. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, you're listening to Live Transformations, and I am your host, Michael Hart of Elam Counseling Service. We have been talking about this whole issue of eating disorder and Judy Gator, so a guest today has shared her experience of eating disorder. Uh, Judy talked about how eating disorder was used as a way of coping with the challenges that she was undergoing in life. She also shared about the fact that she came to, to fate with God and that her fate became a source of, of strength as well. But uh, Judy also uh, mentioned that it was very important for her to have gotten uh, professional help. So if you're if you're listening to this show today and you're struggling with eating disorder, you might be a believer, you might not be, whatever your situation is, I'm encouraging you to seek help because there, life can be better, you can overcome this temptation and this challenge and you can find freedom. And maybe it, it may be a good thing to give, give me a call at, at 613-699-1677. Again, it's Elim Counseling Service. This is uh, Michael Hart, and my contact number is 613-699-1677. We can also be reached by by our website at www.elimcounselingministry.com. That's counseling with two L's. So whatever you're going through today, whatever help you might need, I'm, I'm uh, praying that you would take the step to begin to change your life. Tomorrow could be the start of a brand new journey towards freedom. Until next time, I pray that God would bless you in all your relationships and keep you sound in mind and pure in heart. God bless you and thank you for listening to Life Transformations.